Good morning, everyone. It's Mike Nelson from the district office. I'd like to thank you for giving me a few moments of your time today to talk about our preparations for the Smarter Balanced Assessment and all of the other spring assessments coming up here in just a few months. We recognize that there are a lot of challenges with this, so my theme today is about the movies. Certainly, there's going to be action, there's going to be a lot of drama, there's going to be even some comedy, but at the same time, we hope to be able to put together a very good production, worthy of our time. This is the first time that we've taken the Smarter Balance assessments in large scale. Most of you were involved with a field test that we did this last year, but some grade levels were excluded from that. Some of the pieces weren't quite working. But our goal is to making sure, make sure that you have a good understanding so that you can better understand the needs of your students and we can better inform our parents and community during our testing window. For all of our assessments, the testing window is up on your screen, March 31st to May 22nd. Now we recognize that that is right at the beginning of our spring break, so most of our testing will take place in the second week of April, but we will be moving on right to the end. The deadline is May 22nd. Today's presentation has several objectives. You can see them up on your screen, but I wanted to be able to provide you a historical context to what we're gonna be doing, what we have done in our district, as well as give you an overview to all of the assessments. The ISAT name includes several different assessments. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But the biggest focus for you today is to know how you can prepare. You're just over a month away from the start of our window, so we'd like to introduce you to the Idaho portal, as well as the digital library and the interim assessments, which really do make the Smarter Balance a balanced assessment system. It's no longer a one-shot test whereby students sit down and we guess how students are going to perform. We have ways to be able to inform our instruction throughout the time. We'd also like to take a few moments to talk about our statewide uh, assessments and whether parents can opt out. I know that that's a discussion at this point uh, that we are hearing about, as well as give you an opportunity to prepare to proctor the exam to students. The first piece that we would like, our first award, we could say, is going to about spring assessments. We in the Coeur d'Alene School District have a challenge because we've always been the highest achieving large district in our state. In fact, you can see for over four years we've outperformed all of our peers. This is on the Idaho Standards Achievement Test, the old one. And you'll notice here as you look at my cursor, uh, the Coeur d'Alene School District actually outperforms all of the closest districts in many ways by four plus percentage points. We're probably not going to be able to do that for a little while. Uh, the scores are going to be reset, but certainly we have very high expectations that we can continue this uh, trend that we have. But we've also been down this road before. The question is for us is we've always been the highest achieving large district in our state for the past several years. We can hold that with a great deal of pride. But how will we now compare to the highest achieving large district in California? That's San Marino Unified School District. Or even in Connecticut with Apokinimic School District in Connecticut. How would we perform against them? They're the largest high achieving district in that state as well. Well, the Smarter Balanced Assessment gives us an opportunity to do that for the first time. And we recognize any time we give a new assessment in our state, there is going to be some challenge. We've been giving statewide assessments in the spring for over 20 years. And we can take a look at this graph, seeing what we've done from the Iowa Test of Basic Skills, where over 50% of our students were proficient, to the time that that assessment ended in 1999, 80% of our students were proficient in just... 15 years, the uh, percentage of students proficient grew 30%. You can see the same idea. When the new ISAT was introduced in our state in 1999, the 2000 school year, well, you could see our students didn't perform very well. Only 60% of students passed, and when that test was reset in 2004 where, with a vendor change, it even dropped a little bit further. But now again, highest achieving large district in the state. We recognize that we will probably have a score drop just like they saw in Kentucky. The state of Kentucky was one of the first states to be able to give the, uh, the Smarter Balanced Assessment and the Park Assessment, uh, which are both aligned to the Common Core State Standards. And in elementary school, you can see here that their reading proficiency went down pretty much, quite a bit. In uh, mathematics, same thing, went from 73 down to 44. Here in middle school, 70% proficiency rate went down to 46, and though on. 
But there's one thing to keep in mind. Even though we're expecting scores to go down, we certainly don't want them to go down exponentially. But in high school, the percentage of students who were college and career ready in one year grew 9%. So the core standards are aligned to that expectation, so we expect to see that going up as well, even if our initial scores are not as high as we would like to. So what are we going to be doing this spring? Let's give you a little bit of background about what we are preparing for with the spring assessments. There are three separate assessments, all under the ISAT name. The first is the old ISAT. Yes, that exam is still around for one more year. We have the brand new ISAT called the ISAT presented by Smarter Balanced. You can certainly call it ISAT 2.0 or the new ISAT if you would prefer. We also have a new assessment in high school called EOC Science, which they are calling ISAT Science, but we'll just call it the end of course for now. So let's take a look at each of these. First of all, the old ISAT is still around and it is still used in grade 12 for this year only reading mathematics and language usage. So if a student was deficient in reading math or language usage in any of those subjects, they will have one final chance to be able to meet expectations for benchmark with this exam. Additionally, for those of you who are in our elementary or middle schools watching this presentation, if your students are in grade 5 or 7, they will take the old science ISAT exam. All of the questions in this old version of the ISAT are multiple choice and again based on a minimum standard of understanding. Uh, there are no extender questions, however. These are just grade level questions and your preliminary scores will be instantaneous. For those of you who have never seen the ISAT, similar to what we've seen before, the prompt will be on the left hand side and there will be multiple choice questions that a student can make. Uh, also, something to keep in mind is scoring. We'll talk to you about what the new scoring will take a look like. But the scoring was fairly nebulous. We really never got down to the classroom level on scores. And so we'll talk to you about how that is, but the scoring is certainly going to change in this. Also, for those of you who are preparing for testing, please note that our Chromebooks in the district and our iPads cannot be used for the ISAT exam in this old version. Again, uh, for the old ISAT in grade 12, grade 5, and 7 science, no Chromebooks nor iPads can be used. Then we get into our new assessment, the Smarter Balanced, or as the state is calling it, the ISAT presented by Smarter Balanced. This is a computer adaptive assessment. The first 65% of all questions that students receive will be on grade level. They will not be the same questions delivered to every student in the state like the previous ISAT, these will be on grade level first from a very large bank, and then at that point the test will adapt. In other words, if the question, or the student's answer is correct, the next question will be a little bit harder. If it's a little bit, uh, if the student struggled on the first question, their next question will be a little bit easier. A student can actually advance on the exam up to two grade levels higher or two grade levels lower based on their pattern of responses. The same format is there from last year. We will have a performance task for each grade level and each subject, English language arts and mathematics. We will also have different questioning types like we saw last year, selected response, constructed response, and technology enhanced questions. However, there is a couple of things that are important for us to know. If a student receives a proficient score at level three or level four at as early as their ninth grade year, those scores are bankable for this year. I will inform you, however, that our legislature, our State Department of Education, and the State Board of Education are reviewing rules regarding the Smarter Balanced right now. That is the most current information that we have and will inform you via email if anything does change. Additionally, teachers have the options of using interim assessments or items and activities from the digital library. We'll show you that here in a few moments. Also important to note, the English language arts assessment has been shortened. The passages, as well as the number of questions tied to a passage, has been reduced, and the mathematics exams have been reduced by three questions apiece. So they are estimating that testing time will be less than the previous year. I don't know what's happening to my video, we'll just move that past that. That's a reminder of our performance tasks. 
Uh, the performance tasks will be released on March 17th, that's St. Patrick's Day, and we expect you to be able to have video and print materials for students to look at as soon as they're released posted on Info Center. But you'll be given the opportunity to use those stimuli and then a question will be delivered to students in the computer lab. For example, the video that you should have just seen was actually about uh, new robots in Japan and helping the elderly. Well, now the student could actually take information from that to be able to make a constructed response argument in this case. Selected response will look something similar to this. It could be in multiple choice format, whereby only one answer is correct, or it could be in multiple answers being correct. Additionally, this is an example of a constructed response stem. Uh, students will be able to see the prompt over here. The prompt can be expanded by pushing this little button here, which would make it more full screen, and then students will be asked to type in their responses. These are going to be graded by Idaho teachers in addition to the company or any teacher who uh, applies for that. I sent emails out uh, if you would like to be paid to be a constructed response grader about two weeks ago. Finally, technology enhanced, whereby a student will be asked a prompt and then have to demonstrate it by using technical tools. Using the tools on this assessment is essential, and we want people to make sure that they have an opportunity to be able to drag and drop and navigate the test efficiently. EOC Science is the new one. This is going to affect students in high school, those that are completing a biology or chemistry course. So they have to be enrolled in second semester in biology and or chemistry. We may have students that are taking both biology and chemistry at the same time. In that case, they would have to sit for the exam as well. Uh, students may also bank a proficient score in this, and again, uh, this is a completely multiple choice assessment, and it replaces 10th grade science. It is based on the Idaho content standards in biology and chemistry. You can see those as well as a blueprint for the exam on Info Center Teaching and Learning Science. Here's a little piece of what it, uh, the exam is going to look like. There is some performance assessment that's built into the exam. Also, starting on the middle of, uh, I believe it's February 26th, uh, we will be able to push the testing engine as well as the tutorials out to science teachers throughout our district. So be on the lookout for those. And once again, there is no Chromebook nor iPad available for this assessment. No Chromebooks or iPads available for EOC Science nor ISAT 1. So altogether, you can see uh, up on the screen, there's our testing window of March 31st to May 22nd. All students in grades 3 through 10 will have a minimum of three exams. Again, they'll have a science ISAT for grades 5, 7, and high school. And they'll also be able to take the Smarter Balanced Assessment in English Language Arts and Mathematics. One of the most important things is building a testing schedule. Make sure that you communicate and collaborate with your building administration so that they know when students are going to test, that you as a classroom teacher are also aware of when students will test so that you can effectively communicate that to parents as well. Also, the last date for student enrollment for testing is May 8th. That means any student who arrives after May 8th will not need to be tested. However, if a student enrolls earlier than May 8th or on May 8th itself, we are required to test them before the May 22nd date. Their scores will not count, but for participation, we must test all students. So what can you do to get prepared for the ISAT itself, the new ISAT for Smart, by Smart Amounts specifically? Well, the one thing you can't really do is cram. Uh, on the old ISAT, you could review your information very quickly, very easily, very concisely. Well, the, the way that the new assessments are designed, you really don't have the chance to do that as well. Keep in mind, everything on the ISAT 2.0, or the ISAT by Smarter Balanced, is based on depth of knowledge. On the old ISAT, almost everything was in this level, level 1. Now, almost all of the questions are going to be in levels 2 and 3, so students are going to interpret construct, classify, assess, compare, investigate, and differentiate much more than they have done before. 
So consider doing some of these activities with your students. We'll leave it up on the screen for you to take a look a little bit further. Additionally, all of this information is available up on InfoCenter, Teaching and Learning, District Assessments, Smarter Balanced. We have a new website also, which allows you to access all of the information regarding the ISAP presented by Smarter Balanced in a very concise way. You'll notice also that there is an area for students and families. Yes, students and families can use this website to inform them about what we're doing and also get more information about assessments in the state of Idaho in general. The web address is down at the very bottom. It's idaho.portal.airast.org. It is also linked to our district website, and I would encourage all webmasters in the district to, pro to provide a link on their own sites as well. On the right-hand side, you can get to the practice and training tests. Keep in mind that the practice test is simply a way for students to be able to practice the navigation of the test, not necessarily to take actual test questions nor get a score. You can also access the digital library, which is our next stop here in just a few moments. Again, there are the uh, passcodes on the left-hand side, different ways to enter the assignment for students and families, teachers, and the others who will be administering the exam. For example, here is inside the students and families area. Students can get just general information or provide information about the assessments, and again, take the practice test right there. So feel free to set it out so that parents can actually see what students will be doing. It also, again, allows them to take the practice test, which we demonstrate using the exact same testing tools that students will be taking. All of the questions are on grade level, but they do repeat themselves throughout, so it's not as if they're taking a unique test every time that they would log in. Let's also take a few moments to take you to the Digital Library by Smarter Balanced at that same website. Again, it's idaho.portal.air. AST.org. The Smarter Balance Digital Library is a wonderful tool for our classroom teachers, whereby for the first time you can access a range of lesson plans, unit plans, instructional resources, and support materials based on the information that you would like. This is password protected, and at the very beginning of the school year, we gave all teachers in the district, from kindergarten all the way up to grade 12, as well as English language art, specifically in English language arts and mathematics, access to the digital library. When you click on the link on the Idaho portal, you should be able to log in with this information up on the screen. Your full district email address and the temporary password of password123 with a capital P. If for whatever reason that does not work, no problem, we'll get you all reset, but please send your message to testing at cdaschools.org and I'll try to get uh, on it as quickly as possible to get your password reset. Once you're there, you'll be able to see all the information and use the filters right up here at the top of the screen to say really what you're looking for. Currently, there's about 10 to 15,000 items that have been populated by teachers throughout the United States on the digital library. Again, you would use the drop-down menus to say what subjects you're looking for, what grade levels, and again, there's more than just English language arts and mathematics in the digital library. Once you find something, it may look like this. So here is a unit plan based on how you would teach with primary source documentation about the solar system and universe. You'll be able to see what subjects are being covered within it. You'll be able to see what grade levels and what it is. So this is a document that can be downloaded. Down at the bottom, you can also see if it is peer-reviewed, what people thought of it, how many times it's been downloaded, as well as how many times it's been viewed. So if I were to click into that, I would actually get this full teacher's guide of how to be able to use primary source sets, as well as information to be able to use it in the classroom from the Library of Congress. Also, the Smarter Balanced is a balanced assessment system. The Smarter Balance Digital Library does give you this bottom part, the formative assessments. We're going to now talk about the interim assessments, as you already know what kids are going to be doing at the very end. So what can we do in the middle? Well, we'd like to be able to give you an opportunity to give a practice test for students. 
Remember, interim would be used several times a year, quarters, for instance. But this system was just turned on about three weeks ago, so we haven't really been able to use it to that extent. But I think that you should be able to give at least one interim assessment to students before they begin the summative assessment. Plus, you can give it in two different styles. You can give a comprehensive assessment, meaning that you're mock, giving a mock Smarter Balanced Assessment, a full exam in English Language Arts or Mathematics at a particular grade level, or you can actually give a block assessment. So if you've just given the, uh, just completed the unit on number and operations in our elementary classrooms in mathematics, you can give a Smarter Balanced Assessment just on numbers and operations and get information about how your students perform. Again, two different options for you. Comprehensive, block. Why wouldn't you want to use these? They use the exact same testing engine, so students log in the exact same way that they will for the summative assessment. The navigation is exactly the same, and if a student has accommodations, they'll be right there on the screen. Also, the exam is going to be using the exact same bank of questions, using the same reviewing process that our Idaho teachers went through to be able to put questions into the assessment. And teachers will actually score the reconstructed response stem. So you can see what your student responded with. You can see what they should be saying to be able to get it and give them a score. And, of course, you get scores to be able to present to the students to say what they have. Now, keep in mind, this is a secure system, and I've been around the district providing trainings. You will need to be made a teacher in our system to be able to use this. If that's something that you would like, please contact your building administrator or your school test manager. We'll get you in as quickly as possible. Again, to be able to access this, you'll go to the Idaho portal. It is your one-stop shop. There's a web address down there at the bottom. But we're going to enter in at the Teachers and Test Administrators area. When you enter into that area, you're going to see a lot more things than you saw on the student and family side. The place that we're going to start here is the Test Information Distribution Engine, or TIDE. Teachers at that point will be able to create a roster, identifying who is in your class by simply clicking on a grade level, finding out who is listed, and then moving them into a roster. So this is one at Atlas Elementary that has been created already. At that point, you'll also be able to print a list of all of the student information necessary to start your exam. To be able to take the assessment, a student needs to know their first name, their nine-digit state ID number, and a test session. We'll get to that part in just a moment. Once rosters are created, you can now begin the assessment. We're going to now take you to test administration. All teachers can access this. Notice it has the lock down here in the right hand corner. That means that you will need to log in with your username and password. Once you are done, you'll simply use this information in the drop down menus to start finding out what you would like students to take. Whether you would like them to take again the comprehensive assessment or a block assessment. In this case, we've chosen grade 4, English Language Arts, a block assessment called Unlikely Animal. This is a performance task, but you can filter down what you're looking for here. Once you're done, click on the Start Session button, and a session ID will pop up on the screen. Then, all you will need is to have students log in. On every computer in our district, from Chromebooks all the way to PCs, this icon should appear. That allows students to be able to log in, put in their first, in, first name, their state ID number, as well as the session ID that was generated on the last slide, and begin their assessment. This is again what they will see. But they will see, put in their first name, their nine-digit state ID number, and as well as the session ID. There is a handout available on Info Center for you to be able to guide you through this process, and it does walk you through from creating a roster to, administ to administering the exam to what to do after the exam is done. You'll be able to find that on Info Center, Teaching and Learning, District Assessments, Smarter Balanced.
As a reminder, the test will only end when the software identifies that a student's equilibrium score has been found. What does that mean? Well, at this point, it's uh, an opportunity for the test to say, is the student getting consistent answers to consistent questions? So, once the test identifies that that score has been reached, the score will, or the score will be received. Here are the recommended cut scores from Smarter Balance. These have not been approved yet by the Idaho State Board of Education. However, they can be used for, as a guide for our interim assessments. We want our students to score at at least level 3. That could be used as proficient if you, we would like to use old vocabulary. And you can see that in each of the grade levels what that cut score will be at to be able to identify proficiency or even advanced. Here are the cut scores also for math. And once an interim assessment is given, you'll also be able to see how you and your students performed against the school, against the district, and as well as other students in the state of Idaho to see how you all compare and prepare. The Smarter Balanced Assessment is not uh, the old ISAT by any means. It is an assessment that brings a lot of things together that we have not done before. We'll be informing parents with emails as well as uh, providing these parent guides out for you to be able to give out to students. And as well, the score reports that students will receive will have information about the assessment, how they're scoring, as well as scores on each of the strands or claims that uh, the core standards have given us at this point. Here's a list of what it would look like in mathematics as well. And we'll spend some more time on this a little bit later. Each of the scores that a student receives will be based on a claim. So the student will receive an overall score, but yet we will also receive claim scores for claims 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we'd be able to find out specifically where a student's needs may be coming from. The claims for English language arts are also now up on the screen, and they are written in I can or students can statements. Please keep in mind that uh, the Idaho University system has bound together to say that if a student is advanced or proficient in each of these grade levels beginning at grade 10 and up, they may be providing additional scholarships for students to attend an Idaho school. We'll talk more about that at a later time. One of our final topics for you today is about statewide assessment policy. We have heard the uh, questions from parents or guardians about uh, whether they can opt out out of public education. And our State Department of Education has asked us to provide the following information. Unfortunately, no students can opt out of any statewide assessment, as the state of Idaho does not have a clause that allows parents to opt out, nor children to opt out. You'll see up on your screen that uh, there are three different areas. Idaho Code, the No Child Left Behind Law, as well as a, uh, an opinion from the Idaho State Attorney General that uh, gives information as to why they believe this cannot happen. However, if you do get any requests for that, keep in mind that we do have to have participation. We do have to have a 95% of all students in all ethnic subgroups and grade levels taking the assessment. That should say 95%, my goodness. And a student, no, it's correct, students must actually complete a minimum of 65% of a test to actually count for participation. So if we can at least make sure that students are giving attempts to complete the assessment, we'll be able to count it into participation. If you do have uh, some parents or students who are asking you about opting out, just smile and pass the information on to your building administrator and we'll uh, make sure that everybody is well informed as to what we can do so that we can support you and your work in the classroom. As we only have one month to go, a couple of final notes. This is a collaboration. The only way that we can make sure that our students are performing well is that parents are informed, teachers are informed, as well as making sure that the calendar that you're preparing is well available for teachers for students and for parents so that they can make sure that all the information is correct. 
Also, if there are any student accommodations, we'll need to have that finalized very soon so that even on the interim assessments, students know what they're being expected to do and how we can support them. A reminder also that on St. Patrick's Day, the 17th of March, we will have the opportunity to be able to receive the performance tasks for classroom use. Finally, for those of you who are going to proctor, and the state has uh, given us a little bit more flexibility on proctoring the exam, uh, the TA certification course is available on the teacher and test administrator area. All teachers who are going to be giving the exam to students will need to complete this TA certification course, and you will have to log in and provide a certificate that identifies that you've completed the course. Thank you very much for your time this morning. I hope that this was informative to you, but at the same time, I'm always glad to be able to provide any information that you need. You can always reach out to me via email, msnelson at cdaschools.org. Have a great day.